At the same time, trouble in China's property sector. Its new home prices fall at the fastest rate in only 10 years. And not only that, property investment and property sales in China fell as well for the first five months of the year. And this is according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Now, prices of new homes in dozens of major Chinese cities were down 0.7% in May. This is actually the steepest month-to-month -month drop in nearly a decade. Meanwhile, property investment fell 10% year-on-year and home sales shrank 30.5%. Now, all this despite the state taking major steps to try to stabilize its crisis hit property sector. Uh, so disruptions and job losses during the COVID-19 pandemic in China in part have left many Chinese citizens unwilling or unable to spend on homes. And this is, of course, sapping the Chinese economy of another major driver of business activity. Also, Beijing has launched a tit-for-tat anti-dumping investigation into imported pork from the European Union. And this is coming after Brussels announced uh, hiking tariffs on EVs from China. Now, China's Ministry of Commerce said a preliminary inspection of pork and pig byproducts from the EU found enough evidence to launch a formal probe. This is a step that mainly appears to be uh, aimed at Spain. Uh, the Netherlands and Denmark. So any increase in import tariffs on pork could be costly to European pork producers because the EU is in fact the second biggest pork producer and Spain is the top supplier of pork to China. Now here's some numbers for you. The EU accounts for more than half of the roughly six billion dollars worth of pork uh, that China imported last year according to customs data. And around a quarter of that was from Spain alone. Now, Beijing is trying to dissuade the EU from permanently adopting higher tariffs on EVs imported from China. Now, the question here is, if China does in, indeed impose tariffs on the EU, what kind of impact will it have? And is it going to hurt China as well? Uh, for, for the answer, possibly I spoke to Daniel Lacaye. He's a professor of, uh, of global economics of IE Business School in Madrid. Here's what he said. All right, Daniel, thank you so much for joining me here again. So let's talk about this. China opening an anti-dumping investigation into uh, imported pork. Uh, mainly, I, I see that it's targeted at Spain, where you are based. Uh, I mean, let's just start from the beginning here. Are, are we seeing uh, the beginnings of a trade war? I think that we are seeing the continuation of a trade war. Uh, since the Trump administration passed on to the Biden administration, uh, the so-called trade war has not stopped, has actually accelerated. And in the European Union, the trade war is disguised under environmental protection measures. So uh, tariffs, uh, trade barriers, etc. I think that uh, what we have seen is that uh, con considering that the European Union feels that there is a threat to the European electric vehicle industry coming from very affordable, certainly much cheaper than European electric vehicles manufactured in China, uh, they have implemented this 38% tariff on electric vehicles. And obviously, uh, there's immediately some type of retaliation from China, which ends up hurting Spain, as you very well said right now, uh, because it's on imported pork. So Spain is not going to benefit in any shape or form from the uh, protectionism on electric vehicles and is going to be hurt on the pork side. This is the problem of protectionism. Ultimately, the problem of the German, French automotive industry in the case of electric vehicles in the, you know, in competition in electric, in the electric vehicle uh, arena is not one of lack of entrepreneurial competitiveness, is the uh, enormous level of bureaucracy, taxes, burdens on business, etc., that the automotive industry suffers. So it's not that the European manufacturers cannot compete against China is that they cannot compete against China with all of the regulations and burdens of the European Union. So resorting to tariffs doesn't make the European Union more competitive, but makes electric 
vehicle prices more expensive and therefore uh, the transition to cleaner transportation also more challenging. Okay, so, so far this is an investigation, um, but, you know, it wouldn't be surprising that by the end of it, they, they, uh, China, that is, imposes some sort of tariff on, on the pork. I mean, is, do you think this is going to have, and you, you talked about this as well, but maybe just elaborate a little bit. Is there going to be a material impact uh, on Spain and whatever other countries that this measure is targeting? Absolutely it will, yes. Uh, we are seeing it already. The slow, gradual, but relentless increase in protectionist measures that we have seen globally since 2008 slow down growth, reduce competitiveness, make inflation harder on the least privileged people because the inflationist uh, impact of protectionism is significant, particularly for the, the poorest. No? So, uh, so it, it certainly has an impact. Governments will always say that the reduction in growth estimates, that the, the fact that the euro area is in stagnation has nothing to do with all of that. But anyone that looks at it knows that increasing barriers to trade, increasing protectionism, increasing taxes, pu putting unnecessary regulatory burdens, all of those factors certainly hurt the economies. And you mentioned what it will be the impact on Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal. Obviously, those are economies that are not able to accept the luxury of trade barriers like, for example, I don't know, France or Germany may. I don't think that they can either because they're not growing. But uh, for the economies that are still on the process of, of, of you know, converging to the average of the, of the, of the large European Union uh, economies, that is certainly a burden. And for Spain in particular, which has sort of endured the past years of rising taxes, rising regulatory burdens, rising political uncertainty, and managed to come out of, of that end a little bit better thanks to exports, that is a very, very dangerous impact. And it certainly is a negative. And just one more question on this topic. Uh, and let's focus this question on China, uh, its side here. Is, is this a double-edged sword, I wonder? Uh, can you talk about that, imposing potentially pork import tariffs here? Is that going to hurt China as well? Protectionism, no, you know, any protectionist measure is negative on the country that imposes them. Mm -hmm. So it's bad for the European Union and it's bad for China. It's bad for both. You know? uh, the trade barriers and trade wars are always negative for the country that imposes those barriers. So think about this. If you look at the imports of pork and the consumption of pork in China, it's, a, it's an absolutely integral part of the Chinese diet. In many cases, uh, I have read even studies saying that the abrupt increase in pork prices in 2020, 2021 was a, 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 an essential part of the slowdown of the Chinese economy. So placing trade barriers on pork imports and placing tariffs on pork imports is going to increase prices in China. So it's negative for China. It's negative for the European Union. Protectionism never never protects any of the economies uh, that that it, it's such an it's such a negative process because if you think about it as well um, the European Union puts a trade barrier. Then China puts another trade barrier that hurts both China and the European Union. Then the European Union puts another trade barrier that hurts both. And, and what you basically see as, as those things happen is that the path of GDP growth, the path of competitiveness, the path of productivity, the path of real wage growth, etc., all of those are hurt in the process. Those are very, very damaging for the Chinese economy as well. So, Daniel, I do see you talking a little bit about China on social media, and I think you can speak to this as well, and it is big news today. So China's uh, new home prices falling at the fastest pace 
in nearly 10 years. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? What options do Chinese officials have at the moment? Well, I think that it's going to be very, very difficult for them to accept it. But Chinese officials need to understand that they have only one way of uh, addressing the largest real estate bubble in recent history. Uh, it's larger than the real estate bubble of Sweden, of Spain, of the United States, of the UK in relative terms. So the burst of the real estate bubble in China needs to see deflation in prices. There is only one way in which you can deal with it, which is by actually making homes significantly more affordable for Chinese citizens in order to uh, absorb part of that excess of building, which has been absolutely staggering. Now, if Chinese officials, in order to combat deflation, decide to implement measures to keep prices elevated or unaffordable for the majority of people, then two things happen. And we have seen it in Spain. We have seen it in Sweden. We have seen it in Iceland. Two things happen. One is that the excess of supply of homes is not uh, reduced. Second is that the economy enters into weakness regardless. So um, there's only one way in which you can deal with a, with a real estate bubble burst, which is by accepting that the prices of homes as they were being put to the market was completely, completely uh, different for, and significantly uh, higher than what uh, the reality would accept. And, and if they try to bring home prices up, that is not going to work. It never works. The only way in which you deal with it is the way that the United States, you, need, you will need foreclosures, you will need to, be, to see write-offs of real estate portfolios in the banking sector. All of those things need to happen. So you need to have, let's say, the, the reckoning moment of uh, lower home prices, and then maybe you start to recover. Okay, so I think the fear here, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that because uh, real estate for China is a big contributor to economic growth, to GDP, so I mean, I guess officials don't really want prices to come down because of that factor, but you're saying that uh, China is likely to see uh, economic slowdown anyways. Uh, so yeah. why, why do you say that? Well, because it's it's inevitable. The we have seen so many real estate bubbles in so many countries that we now have enough information to understand that uh, the the that bloating GDP with a real estate bubble creates very significant imbalances that always come back to bite. No, so. If I was a Chinese official, I would say I would look at things from a glass half full way, which would be, hey, look, yes, we have this massive problem in the real estate sector, but the economy is still going to grow 4%. If they look at it from the perspective, we don't want prices to come down, we want prices to stay where they are and continue to build as much as we did in order to continue to have the level of GDP growth that the provinces demand, et cetera, et cetera, then you don't solve the real estate bubble and you don't get the benefits that could make more people access a home. So uh, there's, you know, a real estate bubble is, uh, no, no, no government wants to acknowledge a real estate bubble because it, it makes it, it, it shows that the policy implemented to maintain GDP or to increase GDP or to get more tax revenues with rising home prices uh, failed. Okay, fair enough. But if you think about it from the perspective of the real economy, they should see that there is no positive way in which you can absorb the negatives of a real estate challenge if you don't allow the market prices to adjust to reality. So let me just ask one more question here, Daniel. Uh, if uh, Chinese officials follow down the path that you have suggested, there could be some potentially uh, serious, maybe, economic pain uh, uh, in the near term. 
Absolutely, absolutely. There is no other way to address a real estate challenge of this magnitude in no economy. No, there are no measures that can be taken to address such an such an important uh, real estate challenge after 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 such a large increase in imbalances in the housing sector. The, and, and, it has, and it's a day of reckoning. It's happened in Sweden. It's happened in the UK. It happened in the United States. It happened in so many economies. Uh, absolutely, there will be economic pain. But the way to look at it is that, this is the most important part, is that there is no other way to address it. There is no other. If you try to keep home prices, at a level that is unjustified to economic reality, you don't address the problem of the real estate sector and the economy suffers anyhow. All right, thank you so much for your insight today, Daniel. Thank you very much.